Today I'm looking at how we can improve our couplings, whether it be for freight or whether it be for coaching stock, whether it's keen or hunt couplings, instanter couplings, whatever. So stick around, hope you'll enjoy this one. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. A few weeks ago I did um, two videos on tension lock couplings and KD couplings and following advice from, um, from my viewers they've asked me to number all my videos to encourage binge watching in these difficult times and those, those uh, video numbers are 80 and 81 as tension locks and KDs because in this particular video I wanted to keep it to NEM pocket type couplings but I thought I would start with is a specialist kind of coupling um, that's more seen more often really on fine scale models and those are Spratt and Winkle. Now this clearly is a specialist coupling. It's uh, made from kits, you get it in a brass kit form and it's a case of gluing it to the base of your wagon and this particular one is the Mark 1 and there is a Mark 2 uh, improved version available. But you can see by the, uh, the fineness of the coupling and also the coupling hook which actually just goes straight across the buffers that it is a, a truly masterpiece really um, and the way it works with um, its own weight keeping it coupled up. Anyway um, these are the sort of things you would use if you're into fine scale and there are other um, coupling systems available but I really wanted to keep to the, um, the masses, the great unwashed amongst us and like most people I use NEM uh, pocket type couplings um, so I thought we'd have a look at those now and we'll split it into two halves, we'll look at freight first and then coaching stock. So let's get stuck into some freight. I thought I'd just kick off by talking about something called buffer lock and buffer clash. So. Buffer clash is where your wagons will go around a curve and the curve is so tight or the couplings are so close together that the buffers touch each other and then they can cause derailments. So that is buffer clash, the buffers are clashing together. So if you've got um, you know, much closer couplings than this and you're on a first, first radius curve perhaps that's what can happen. If however they they rise over each other and one is locked in behind the other that is known as buffer lock and normally you get a derailment. It might be easier for me to explain on these Oxford um, motor rail wagons. This one used to have a sign but um, that fell off two minutes ago. <laughs> Great product. So there's your, there's your buffers together there and so it goes around a bend and they touch his buffer clash and this is what buffer lock is where one will actually ride behind the other buffer lock and normally ends up in derailments. So whatever couplings you decide to insert into your NEM pockets you need to understand though that those two items and the tight the, the the tightness of your curve. So if you're running on first or second degree uh, radius curves then you need to establish whether your couplings will allow your wagons to separate enough to get around without buffer clash or eventually buffer lock. I hope that makes sense. Now I think it's fair to say there's kind of two types of freight wagons. There's these ones here which have uh, fixed wheels and there's also the bogey type freight wagons such as these which have a movable bogey and I'm going to treat the ones with a movable bogey the same as I do with uh, coaching stock um, a little later. So what can we do about these kind of couplings? These are the KDs which I showed you in a previous video and they work absolutely brilliantly. Um, they are far far better than tension lock couplings but people might say well they're still not very good are they? They're still pretty naff looking well it's the pick of the best of a bad bunch really but what else is available? 
Well, Backman have came out with um, these little couplings here, and they're just a straight coupling. And they're used in on their intermodal wagon drawbar, this little bar here. And it's a shocking little thing, really, because all it is is a piece of plastic and you get four in a bag for three pounds ninety five. Backman, you should be ashamed of yourselves, shouldn't you? I mean, if you'd put six in there, you, oh, but just four for four pounds, I think that is shocking. Of course, you'll blame it on the packaging, but well, OK, then we'll put ten in there for a fiver. Um, it would really have no consequence. This is absolutely shocking. So you might think that you could stick one of those underneath here. Well, let's have a little bash. OK, I've taken out the, uh, the KDs. And if I use this little intermodal one and just drop it on the top, I'm sure you can see there that it's actually too short to fit through and click into place um, on the underside of these. So what else is available? Well, I found these ones from Shapeways, which I did cover in a previous video. And they come in various heights um, in case you've got offset couplings. And this one here, if you notice, there's a drop down. So if your boxes aren't at the right same height. And this is a instanter coupling where that third link drops down and pulls the wagons together. So if I push this one into here and into there, now I do realise now we've got more of a permanent coupling and this is what it ends up looking like. And I think that that is absolutely brilliant. I really do. And if you can afford to keep your rakes permanently coupled up on your layout, that kind of works. Or you could put, say, four together because you can easily pick up four wagons at once and then just put a KD at the end of each um, rake of four. But these little plastic um, couplings are brilliant. Now, I may be a little bit of a dinosaur in today's world um, because I don't have any three, uh, 3D printing, but I don't really know how difficult it would be for you to turn out, if you're into that kind of thing, how much it would cost you to turn out these kind of couplings yourself on a 3D printer. But um, I suppose it's all to do with the um, type of plastic and whether it's got a little bit of give in it to whether it would work. But I have broken some of these um, when I'm taking these on and off the layout, but I'm banking on these of when I put my freight wagons permanently together on a layout, I intend using these. And I'll just show you a couple of other examples. And here we have two Dapol gunpowder wagons and a Backman van. And I've used these on our club layout because I keep a KD at one end and a tension lock on the other. So I can kind of hook them up um, with anything that's running around the layout, really. But as you can see, the distance between the buffers is quite... Uh, shall I use the P word? No, it's quite reasonable. Um, it, they look good. Um, yeah, I, I like it. It does work for me. Um, I just need to uh, give you that number of that video which is 67. So in my back catalogue, video 67, I explain about how these couplings work. But they are quite straightforward. Um, they come, uh, you can get a, a sample pack and then you can kind of pick which ones you want. All, all, they're all numbered up, all, all different. Uh, and then from your sample pack, you can sort out which ones you want. And then clearly um, I've gone down the avenue of, generally speaking, um, they're either straight across three links or this staggered instanter coupling. And they're absolutely fine. I mean, there's a straight instanter and there is a um, one, one with a height correction. So that's what I do with my wagons. My preference is these. My second preference is KDs. Um, and my <laughs> clearly my last one is um, tension lock. One other thing worth a mention is on eBay, you can buy 
um, from uh, 3D printers these little pockets, um, NEM pockets, you can pop them on the back of your wagons and um, yeah, glue them on. The trouble is, of course, uh, you need a coupling with a little bit of give in it. Um, you know, so, so that, uh, because this doesn't swivel, unlike on, on the bottom of these wagons, this, this uh, item does swivel. And you can see there's some play in there for when you go around bends. So the swivel is going to have to be taken up by that, or you will have a movable bogey wagon. Of course, you ought to talk about prices. Um, I think this small sample pack from uh, Shapeways, I think it was about 18 quid, which clearly um, isn't uh, that cheap. But we are where we are. At least it kicks you off. Um, and in the long run, it would be cheaper than um, using KDs. And at the end of the day, um, you know, they just look better. And of course, you can paint them up and uh, jobs are good and really. But that's um, that's where we are. I can't remember how it is. Probably something like a fiver for those um, NEM pockets printed. And I mentioned about the shocking price of those uh, uh, intermodal link things from Backman. Um, I just I was absolutely mortified. Um, to find this. I was actually trying to think of using them on yeah, intermodal wagon drawbar times four. Um, but I just, I was, I was dumbfounded that um, they could charge so much for just this, this piece of plastic. God, I'm bleating on now, aren't I? Um, but, uh, but there we go. Wagons, it's, I like these. I also would then go to KDs um, and then eventually I would go to tension locks. Um, but you'd have to drag me kicking and screaming. That'd be a good reason. Um, if you're a, um, a Helix owner, these are kind of good to go there. You know, they're not going to pull apart. Um, the weakest part is probably the coupling where, it, um, where there's a little bit of play in it. There's a small area here to allow it to move. Um, and I think that's probably where I've broken mine because they've been a little bit um, brutal when I've taken them on and off the layout in the club. Because we go to the club on, a, uh, on the first Saturday of the month, or we did before... before before the lockdown, the government took away our freedom. No, it wasn't the government really, was it? Um, before we gave our, our freedom in a, in a, in a what do you say, in a dose of common sense, really. Um, but yeah, first Saturday of the other month, we always have a running day, so we would all bring our various trains and stuff, pop them on the layout and away we go. And if you want to run steam, you can, or diesels, or class 66s, or evening stars. You know, we don't have a um, some prototypical ruling, we just, we're just grown-up people who just like to run trains and have a bit of fun. There we are. Right, I think we're done on um, on freight. Um, we'll move on to um, carriages, coaching stock. This is much more interesting. Now, regarding coaching stock, there's something worth understanding, and that's the kinematic coupling. Okay, that starts with a K, and it's a system used. Uh, to allow the coupling to extend as the coaches go around a bend. And the sharper the bend, the more they extend. And I can get my uh, coaching stock with a little bit of modification to go around first radius curves, as I did with my original Chadwick TMD little exhibition layout. This is a Mark II coach from Mackman. And Underneath here, there is something known as a kinematic coupling. It's kinematic with a K. And what happens is, as the coach, this one's jammed up, as the coach goes around a corner, it extends the coupling arm, which makes all the difference because then the coaches are allowed to pull apart from each other so they don't get buffer lock. Hopefully that all makes sense. And when you put two Backman Mark IIs together, they look OK. The gap here doesn't tend to look excessive, but the kinematic couplings actually pull together. So it's until your train goes away, and that's when you realise that you still have a substantial gap. And as I own a scale ruler, I can measure that gap, which is... 
two feet. So that's quite a jump really, isn't it? Sort of 60 miles an hour across that gap. But what can we do to improve it? Well, there are a couple of options around. And the first one is this option again, another two Backman Mark II coaches. But as you can see, there is almost no, diff no gap whatsoever between them when I pull the coaches apart. If I let go, they, they simply touch. So if they were in a station, you would see no gap at all. And if I pull them apart, there's a kind of maybe a one millimeter gap. And when it goes around a curve, as you can see, the couplings open up. And then as she straightens up again, it gets pulled back together. And this is um, the Keen system. And it utilizes the the kinematic couplings from these Backman coaches. And if we zoom in a little on this, hopefully you can see the uh, the cream coloured plastic is what's replaced the Backman um, coupling, pulling them much closer together. And it's got a small knuckle coupling. Now I do like these, but this knuckle is very, very narrow and you can get um, uncouple that well you, if um, bad point work which I had on my original layout you could get them to uncouple because if you'd put them in at a different height it could lead to problems and putting this mark two against the restaurant mark one or a break mark one you had to make sure you had the right um, height when you glue these ones in so if you make the mistake of gluing it at the, at the wrong height uh, it does just lead to problems and you also had to do a, a tiny little bit of filing in here in this knuckle arrangement to make sure um, that you had enough tolerance for it to go around the bend and not lock up. They are fiddly to put together on a layout. When you just, it's it's easy, easy for me to do here and you can see the way they work. And then as I turn around the bend, they turn right out and these coaches will all go around a first radius curve. Keen couplings. On the Mark II Backmans with a kinematic facility, these are brilliant. But fair play to Backman because they've also come up with this little uh, NEM coupling which replicates the vacuum pipes that run between the coaches. So if I turn these over and whack this in and see what that looks like. Clearly easier said than done, isn't it? Okay, one down, one to go. <clears throat> Got there in the end. Okay. So they now touch themselves with that coupling. And if we go around the bend, they all kind of works as well. So fair play to Backman. They've got to, they've got a problem of their own sorted out, and um, that little uh, piece of work then from that pipe does the job. They're not as close as they are with the Keen couplings, but uh, they are very easy to install, um, and they do um, an, a really adequate job. The drawback, of course, is that unlike the Keen couplings. If I've got a rake of say, you know, 10 coaches to get them off the layout, I have to kind of push them all over and start uncupping them because clearly I can't pick them all up. So actually getting our, a large rake of coaches that are permanently coupled through their NEM pockets on and off of the layout is a struggle. So how can we get around that problem? Now, one of the responses to episode 80, the That'll be the phone then. Sorry about that. One of the responses to episode 80, where I first covered the, uh, the couplings in episode one, was from a gentleman called uh, 1952 Tony C. Um, and he suggested that 
instead of using these just these ordinary um, vacuum brake clips from Backman, but to cut them in half and use earth magnets um, to allow them to clip together. So I bought some of these earth magnets and the day they arrived, Hunt Couplings, <laughs> you couldn't make this up, could you? Hunt Couplings brought out their magnetic NEM coupling system. But I'll show you what these are all about. Here is the original NEM coupler from Backman. And here is one that I've chopped up. And what I've done is I've simply cut it in half, nibbled a little bit of the plastic from both ends, and then glued two tiny earth magnets onto each end. And the earth magnets, I bought um, a pack of them, and hopefully you can see the pack here, as you can see how small these things really are. And this cost me £5.45 including VAT from Spider Magnetics Limited and I bought them via eBay, a well-known auction site. Um, how many magnets are there in the packet? I can't really, is it 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 or 30 magnets? Um, they're um, called, I can never say this, neodymium, neodymium earth magnets. So there we are and they work great. So if I just simply pop them onto these two coaches never works as well when the camera switched on does it come on right there's one here's the other of course when you glue them it glue the magnets to the um, to the vacuum pipes once you've glued the first one, you've got to make sure you glue the second one the right way around. Otherwise, as I'm sure we all are aware, they will repel rather than attract. So you've got to get them the right way around. I've just put that one upside down. Um, you've got to put them in the, uh, the right way around. Otherwise, they will repel rather than attract. So there we are. And if I pop them together now, hopefully they should jump together. And there we have it. And to me, that's a pretty nifty coupling. If I pull them apart, I have some slack in there, which is part of the kinematic coupling. But before we look at the hunt coupling system, I thought I'd just put to bed um, the miserable coupling arrangements on these Oxford motor rail wagons. Now, if you're an HO modeler, whether you be um, stateside, Australia or wherever, um, these are the dreaded tension lock couplings and this is the current edition from Oxford uh, Oxford Oxford Rails uh, motor rail wagons and there we can see the distance between the buffers and using this stunning um, modeler's ruler I can tell you that the distance <laughs> the scale distance between these buffers um, is three foot eight inches or if you're into metric 1.2 meters between the buffers and for some reason this manufacturer thinks that's okay it's shocking absolutely shocking um, i've tried all the other couplings on it the magnetic ones and the um the uh, vacuum pipes and sadly we all comes down to kd as it usually does and the kd distance between these buffers is 18 inches um, or let's say half a meter and these are KD size 17. So this is the smallest you can get, but you can certainly see the difference. It's now um, acceptable. It's probably um, a reasonable term for it, but, uh, but there we are. So as I mentioned, then along came Hunt couplings. And once they were back in stock, because there was an initial shortage, I think the amount of YouTubers that got involved in this one, um, and I ordered a close coupling pack and an HST pack. Um, and I will just mention the cost. It doesn't come cheap, does it? Um, actually, it's not that expensive either. The HST set is $12.95, and as is the um, close coupling pack and three quid postage. So 29 quid, if you like, delivered. 
So let's see how they fit into my uh, Backman Mark IIs. So what's in the close coupling pack? Well, there's a bag full of close couplings, hopefully. So if we tip these out, put them out of the way, and on the coupling we have an A and a B. So obviously if you um, have an A and a B, they attract, whereas if I have get this wrong and I put two A's together, then clearly they're going to repel. As you can see, you just cannot kind of put them together. Marvellous. So you have an A and a B, one per coach. So um, let's fit them onto the coach. And an ordinary um, standard NEM coupling, in goes the B. So this end we shall have an A. Poke that in, good to go. And then offer them across and hopefully you can see where they're coupled up. And they seem relatively sticky, bonded, if you know what I mean. If I pull them apart, yep, they do kind of come apart. Um, but only time will tell. If you've got a, a rake of eight of these, you know, wanging around a helix, I don't know how strong these magnets will be, but then, you know, a lot of it's down to your own point work and everything else. But they do seem very close. I mean, they are, they are touching, aren't they? They are touching. So um, it would appear they are just as good as those uh, keen system ones, as long as obviously they stay together. Beautiful. We're moving on to the HST fleet. Again, you get another bag of couplings, all straightforward, all marked A and B, and um, all rather sensible. It obviously wouldn't be fair if I was just horrible to um, Backman and Oxford Rail during this video, so clearly it must be Hornby's time. Now Hornby's coaches um, do not have the kinematic coupling. All you have is this floating bogey. And when you put the coaches together with these wonderfully high-tech drop link couplings, they are pretty Dreadful, you get a reasonable gap in the middle, and I think I worked that out at uh, just over. Yeah, it's about one foot, one foot three inches between there and under strain. The locomotives, however, do have a different coupling because they need to do a drop link to uh, to get from the NEM pocket um, up to the up to the correct height, and the uh, this dreadful coupling here is even worse and the gap is even worse. So let's stick a couple of couple of couplings, couple of couplings, couple of couplings on here and see how we get on. So this coupling here must just pull out because you can't see the wings. So if I put a bit of pressure on it, there it comes. And amongst the bag of couplings, there's one that's stepped. And hopefully you can see that. In fact, let's drive in a bit closer. So you can see that it's stepped. And that's obviously designed to take the, cup, the, um, uh, the, the coupling up to the normal running height of the coaches. So if we whack that in there, a bit of a click, and there we have it. So now I need to turn my attention to... Uh, the ordinary couplings and pick out one that attracts, which clearly isn't that one. So we're going to go for A, <laughs> A, we're going to go for A. So this one here must be a B. Right, so I need to install this A into a coach. Now, so we'll go straight into a first class coach because obviously first class would come first. And um, these extremely high tech couplings from Hornby just pull out as you can see and then we need to get this thing out. Now I've made some alterations to some of my HSTs because on the club layout when they go around they've actually pulled this coupling all the way out because it only just clips in and I've super glued some of mine in. Hmm, that's going to be interesting then isn't it? So what I need to do now is to get this into here which means lifting up this little box arrangement 
um, which isn't rocket science. Um, I think it's just two little tags, is it? And this should flip out. Let's use the wrong tool for the job, shall we? Oh no, sorry, I got it all wrong. It comes off the other side, right? So that comes off there. And then this must go on. And it doesn't show a side, so I want the A. I want to be able to see the A. So we'll face that down. And then we need to pop this little arrangement back on again. to hold that coupling in place. Not quite on, there it is. Okay, so back to me coach. The high-tech fitting, stick it in the hole and press it. That's the end of that. And then this should then join up with this locomotive. Well, not exactly mind-boggling uh, close, is it? That's a bit of a disappointment, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, anyway, let's stick the other one on the other end and see what that one looks like. So exactly the same again. I'll just uh, change these around and then get back to you. So here we have the coach to coach arrangement and the distance is down now to just under a foot, it's about nine inch, about a nine inch gap, um, which is, um, is that better than without these couplings? Well, there is the normal gap, which is is one foot three. So in reality, there's a six inch gain between these, which, um, isn't really a huge amount, to be perfectly honest. But, um, yeah, it's better, but it's not wonderful. Um, it is what it is, really, isn't it? You know, there's that one there. And then there's that one there. Whoops, probably can't see that, that one there. So um, I think the best thing to do now is take a little look on the layout. So the gap between the 125 unit and the coach still strikes me as quite um, severe really. But when we look at the coupling underneath you don't have the dreaded um, tension lock coupling which kind of makes it look a bit better. You, but you have got this kind of straight rod and if we come and have a look at a um, coach to coach kind of rod and then you can see it also looks a bit kind of odd, but hey, it's not a tension lock coupling, is it? And the distance between the coaches, I don't think has changed a great deal, but the overall look of the coupling has improved. Now here's the view of the Hunt couplings on two Backman Mark II coaches. And, and this is quite remarkable, really. Um, it's, it's great. Um, you don't have the dreadful look of the tension lock couplings um, and clearly there's no discernible gap and as long as they stay together then it's clearly a vast improvement on the original. And now swinging into shot is the Keen system ones. And to be honest there's very very little difference. Um, if your track works good they sh these clearly shouldn't come apart so there's no real difference in those. As I thought now for the finale of the day, we'd end up with a tug of war. So in the red corner, we have the Hunt coupling. But in the blue corner, we have the homemade earth magnets. And if I physically pull those two end coaches apart, we will see who wins. And the winner is... Hunt Couplings! <laughs> so the Hunt Coupling is clearly stronger 
than my earth magnets. Well, there we go. I didn't expect that. I actually expected it to be the other way around. So the hunt couplings have it. Best out of three. Yeah, once again, it's the hunt couplings. So an undecided, a 2-0 victory to hunt couplings, fair play. So a little bit of a light-hearted end um, to what hopefully you found to be an interesting video. Couplings are a kind of nightmare, really. Um, you know, from those dreadful tension lock to, I don't know, the poor performance of Oxford Rail with their couplings. Um, and, and even the modifications carried out by uh, hunt couplings to the HST is a bit of a disappointment, but because that train doesn't have the kinematic uh, coupling assembly, then it's hard for them to, to, to sort of cope with the separation of coaches as they go around the bends. Um, I was surprised by the um, hunt couplings on the Mark IIs. They're, they are good to go. I wouldn't buy any more of the, uh, of, of the keen ones. I mean, you know, why, why, why would you at the end of the day? Um, so there we go. But what really matters now is down to you. What have you used? What have you got on with? And what have you found to be a disappointment? Have you used the Keen system ones? I've got the Keen system ones to go in the, the, the HST unit, but it does mean cutting into every coach and ripping the floor bed out to make them work. And I'm not too sure I really wanted to do that. Um, but the, the hunt couplings aren't quite what I'd hoped. It's kind of, we are where we are really. Um, so please let me know in, uh, down below your comment and how you've got on. In the meantime, as usual, I'd like to thank my uh, patrons and, and the people who donate to me. Please don't forget to subscribe, it's free, and there should be a video here and here. Take care. See you next Friday. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.